Hey, hey, hey. All right, y'all, with the NBA season rapidly approaching, I wanted to have some fun in this video. We are a little, little woozy off the bourbon. And uh, we're just going to let some hot takes fly and uh, see what happens across this great NBA season. Now, I went ahead and I came up with one hot take for each and every NBA team, meaning that we have 30 to go over. And to make it a little more interesting, I threw them in what I perceived as the order from coldest to hottest. Now, obviously, it's subjective. Uh, I'd rather y'all worry about the actual hot takes than the order of them. Anyways, we have 30 of them, so let's just jump right into it. Starting in Atlanta, I believe that Dyson Daniels and Anyeka Akangwu will be certified starters by the end of the season. And, you know, just to throw a little asterisk on it, I don't mean just, you know, due to injuries, you know, uh, maybe, you know, Clint Capella suffers a season on injury and Akangwu becomes a starter. I don't mean that. I mean just skill-wise, if everyone on the team is healthy, those two guys will be a part of the starting five. Next, the Utah Jazz will finish last in the Western Conference. Their only real competition are the Portland Trailblazers, and even though I do like the Utah Jazz starting five more than the Portland starting five, I do think that Portland just has a bit of a deeper team, but I'm debating the Jazz and the Trailblazers right now. Let's just, let's move on. Next up, the LA Clippers, and my hot take is that they will miss the plane entirely. Now, this one mostly banking on the fact that Kawhi Leonard is not going to be very healthy this year. He's been having issues all summer with the knee injury that took him out of the last season's playoffs. And, uh, you know, James Harden, still a really good player, um, overhated by a lot of people at this point in his career, but I just don't think it's going to be enough in that really, really talented Western Conference. In New Orleans, I think that Trey Murphy will be a starter by the end of the season, he 100% should be a starter straight out the gates, but they have a little bit of a pileup at that wing position and guard position in general with DeJounte Murray, CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Zion. Either way, Trey Murphy is absolutely a starter level guy talent wise, and he should be in that five at some point this season. For the 76ers, I think that Tyrese Maxey will make an all NBA team. He took a big leap last year, made the all star game. I think he is ready to to take another big leap this year and solidify himself as one of the great players in the NBA. For the Dallas Mavericks, I think it'd be cool if Klay Thompson leads the league and sets a new career high in three-pointers made, which currently is 301, which he actually set just two seasons ago back in the 2023 season. So, you know, he's getting more shots up at this point in his career. He's on a new team that hopefully are going to use him correctly. He's playing off of Kyrie and Luka. We'll probably get a lot of open three-point looks, and he's been a great shooter his entire career. I think the only real obstacle standing in the way of this is his health. He's going to have to play enough games to get up enough shots, but it's certainly a possibility to me. Out in OKC, I think that the Oklahoma City Thunder will finish with the best record in the entire NBA. Now, the only real competition for that are the Boston Celtics, and even though the Celtics play in the much easier conference, I think that the Thunder might be a better regular season team, especially if Kristaps Porzingis is going to be missing time with injury. Uh, I think that the Thunder are talented enough that they are going to run through the West pretty easily, at least in the regular season, even easier than the Celtics might in the East. For the Washington Wizards, I think Alex Saar is going to win Rookie of the Year. Now, based off of his Summer League play, this might seem like a hotter take than I have it listed on this list. But you have to keep in mind, it's a pretty quiet rookie class. Alex Saar is the second overall pick, and he's one of the very few guys who actually have the pathway to a lot of minutes and a lot of opportunity this season. Again, his only real competition seems like it's going to be Zach Eady as of now. Out in Charlotte, I am predicting that the Hornets will win a playing game. Now, will it likely be the 10 seed versus the 9 seed game? Ah, that's what I'm planning on, that's what I am thinking, but regardless, a play-in win is a play-in win. Hopefully, LaMelo is healthy enough to see it happen. For the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, uh, this one kind of felt like a boring one, but I have Giannis winning MVP again. Uh, I am a bigger believer than the average NBA fan heading into this year about the Milwaukee Bucks, and if they do bounce back like I am expecting them to do, Giannis will probably play a big part in that. 
and uh, I've been hearing some stuff that Chris Middleton might not be ready to go after his double ankle surgery. So with the Giannis and Dame duo potentially backpacking, I can see Giannis putting up some insane numbers and once again winning the MVP award. For Memphis, I think that the Grizzlies have a chance to finish second in the Western Conference. Everyone has been calling them a dark horse all offseason, I think the hype is real, and if Jaw is able to come out the gates playing like he did last season when he came back from his suspension and Zach Eady fits perfectly into that uh, team and rotations, they could do some damage out west for sure. For the Houston Rockets, I think Dylan Brooks has a good chance of being traded this season. His contract is decreasing year to year which a lot of teams are going to like. Uh, I think the Houston Rockets originally signed him with the idea that they were going to trade him at some point down the line and with guys like Cam Whitmore, Tari Eason, Reed Shepard potentially going to earn more minutes as the season goes on it might just make sense for Dylan Brooks to get shipped to a contender some team that needs wings and a nice uh, gritty defensive player to add to their roster. For the Boston Celtics, I think that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown will both make All-NBA second team or better. Tatum has been at that level for the past couple years now, but Jalen Brown, especially after last season, seems to finally be getting the recognition he deserves, and maybe that continues with an All-NBA appearance. For Toronto, I think the Raptors could make the playoffs. Now, they would obviously do this via the play-in tournament, but I could definitely see them being a good second half team that goes on a run and makes it into the playoffs, probably loses in the first round pretty easily, but makes the playoffs nonetheless. And these next two are pretty similar and for similar reasons, although, you know, different respective to their team spe specificity i can't oh my god <laughs> anyway first up i have the orlando magic they finish as the second seed in the east i think they are primed for a truly breakout season paulo Franz are going to be awesome. The addition of KCP is going to do wonders for that team. I am really excited for what they are about to do to the NBA with that defense. And the team right behind them, the Indiana Pacers, I also have my hot take for them being that they will finish second in the Eastern Conference. Again, super young team on the rise. They just made the Eastern Conference Finals. Hopefully they get a healthy Tyrese Halliburton. They're bringing back the same team. They have a full season of Pascal Siakam. They have one of the best offenses in NBA history. But the standout point to me is, as a Celtics fan, I truly think that they gave us the hardest series possible in the playoffs last year, which is why I feel super high on them compared to the rest of the NBA audience. Over in Denver, I think that Julian Strother will wrap up that fifth starting spot in the backcourt alongside Jamal Murray as they try to figure out how to deal with the loss of KCP. I think his ability to shoot the ball, while he might not be the best on defense, will give him the spot over guys like Peyton Watson or Christian Brown. For the Detroit Pistons, I, well, I wasn't really sure where to go with it since they've just been really bad the last couple seasons, but I think there's a chance that Jalen Duran might get traded as the center market has been pretty hot recently with a lot of contending teams potentially in the need for a center. Jalen Duran, still on his rookie deal, will only be making four and a half million this season, six million team option next season, and he's just a really solid starter level guy, can protect the rim somewhat, can score the ball around the rim somewhat, and he's been in trade rumors. I don't actually I don't want to say he's been in them, but his name has been hovering around trade rumors for the past year or so, so maybe the Pistons decide to cut loose with him and get a pick back or something. For the Chicago Bulls, I think that Matas Buzelis has a chance to win Rookie of the Year. For much of the same reasons I gave for Alex Sar earlier, Buzelis might have a cleaner path to minutes than a lot of other rookies in the NBA this year. I also just really liked watching him in Summer League, so there maybe is a little bias in this one. But uh, yeah, I think Buzelis is a really fun player, and if he's able to get just enough statistical-wise, I think he could throw his name in the mix. For the New York Knicks, fresh off of the big Carl Anthony Towns trade that is actually not finalized yet, and would be kind of funny if it didn't get finalized, but 
I have them finishing lower than fourth in the East, aka they do not earn home court advantage. I just don't trust the bench. You know, if Carl Anthony Towns goes down with a lengthy injury or OG goes down with a lengthy injury or God forbid, you know, Jalen Brunson goes down with a lengthy injury, they just, they might be cooked. They, they might be cooked. Out in Phoenix, I think there's a slight chance that the Suns could finish as the second seed in the Western Conference. A lot of people have them as the dark horse for most improved team this offseason with the additions of Tyus Jones and Monte Morris, aka real point guards. But I low-key think that the Mason Plumlee addition might be the most important because I just don't entirely trust Yusuf Nurkic to be a winning center in this NBA, at least at the starter level. And uh, Mason Plumlee, he, you know, he used to be on that Team USA grind. He, a lot of people sleep on him. He's got good ball skills. He rebounds. He defends. I love me some Mason Plumlee. They also bring back all their other bench pieces like Grayson Allen, Bull Bull, Josh Okogi. I, I just, I, I really like this team. For the Miami Heat, I think there is a slight chance that Jimmy Butler gets shipped at some point this season. Now, with his massive contract, I think it's very unlikely that it happens, but there have been whispers about him potentially wanting to go to the Brooklyn Nets this offseason. There was some turmoil between him and the Heat at the end of last season with him talking shit from the sidelines during the playoff series against the Celtics. And I wouldn't put it past the Miami Heat at all to just say, hey, let's cut bait and at least get something in return for him and uh, trade him to somewhere and not let him choose where he wants to go in free agency. For the Golden State Warriors, I think that Jonathan Kaminga has a chance to win the most improved player award. Now, a lot of people are saying that Wemby has it on lock before a single second of NBA basketball has been played this season. I think that's stupid, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Instead, I'm going to talk about how Jonathan Kaminga might potentially be the second best scoring option on this entire Golden State Warrior team besides Steph Curry, obviously. He should have plenty of shot attempts. I think he is primed to take another leap after his solid leap last year into being a rotational starter level guy for the Warriors. I think he's a really good player. He is still very young, and I think he has his best basketball ahead of him. Out in Sacramento, Kings fans probably not going to want to hear this, but I think there is a chance that the Kings miss the play-in entirely. The Western Conference is just extremely stacked. I have some questions about what this DeMar DeRozan fit is going to look like, and I just don't entirely trust your bench outside of Malik Monk. Also, I just wanted to point out, this is where the stuff starts to get really good. A uh, whole lot of biases uh, at this point of the hot takes. Uh, this is the, Everything from here on out is uh, more so just stuff I'd really like to see masqueraded as a hot take. So, let's just let's get into it. For the San Antonio Spurs, I think that Stefan Castle has a very, very tiny chance of winning Rookie of the Year. It's going to depend on the amount of minutes and playing time he's able to get with Chris Paul in front of him, being that veteran leader that he loves to be. But let's not forget that Castle had a very strong Summer League. Again, I mentioned it a few times already in this video but it's a weak rookie class and again if he just gets enough statistically wise statistical wise statistically i don't know if he gets enough statistics i think there's a chance that he might at least be in the voting for it and who knows everyone seemed to love how he played again in the summer league so he might just run away with it at some point for the portland trailblazers another team that i really wasn't sure what direction to go with for this video so i just went full biased and i think shaden sharp has a chance to make the all-star team this one probably not gonna happen but who knows you know it's a bad portland trailblazer team shaden sharp has had some really good stretches in his young career so far Maybe he puts it together, averages like 22, 24 points per game, and maybe there's a few injuries that he maybe slips into the All-Star game as an injury replacement. I don't know, maybe. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think that Donovan Mitchell finishing in the top three of MVP voting would be a super cool thing to happen. He is a star player that has long been disrespected for some reason in the NBA, and, you know, for this one to happen... You would obviously need the Cleveland Cavaliers to take a leap and win some games and probably finish at least top three, maybe top two in the Eastern Conference. I definitely think that Donovan Mitchell is a good enough player to be in the MVP conversation, so pretty much, again, we'll just need the record and the stats to back it up. 
And then perhaps the most fun one on this list, for the Brooklyn Nets, I have Cam Thomas will lead the NBA in points per game. Obviously, the Brooklyn Nets are projected to be one of the worst, if not the worst team in the entire NBA this season. Cam Thomas is easily the best scoring threat of the team. We all know how much Cam Thomas loves to score the basketball, and there's a good chance that he's just going to be firing at will in some of these games and getting a whole bunch of shots up. I could definitely see a world where he averages north of 30 points per game. He'll probably do it on like 37% from the field, but that's why we love Cam Thomas. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, I would I would really like to see Anthony Edwards somehow win the MVP award. It's very, very unlikely that it happens, but you know, with this recent Carl Anthony Towns, Julius Randle trade, that may or may not happen at this point. Um, it's very clear that the Timberwolves are expecting Ant to take another leap of some sort, getting rid of the offense of Carl Anthony Towns, and they're going to need him to, again, step up on that offensive side of the court. It's something that I think Ant is very capable of doing, and who knows, maybe he does, maybe he averages like 27, 8, and 6, and the Timberwolves finish as a top 2 seed in the West, and he gets his respect and becomes the face of the NBA like everyone wants him to. And then finally, wrapping it all up, if you guys have been keeping track at home, you will know that the Los Angeles Lakers are the only team I have not mentioned yet, and I had absolutely zero clue what to choose for them, but so I thought I'd have some fun and say that JJ Redick will win the Coach of the Year award. I have no analysis, I have no evidence, this is purely a fun vibes hot take that will almost certainly not happen but boy would it be absolutely hilarious if it did anyway that's all i got for this one if you enjoyed make sure to like comment and subscribe definitely let me know in the comments what your favorite hot take was and if you got some hot takes of your own feel free to share i am totally down to read and review them again down in the comments so again hope y'all enjoyed thank you for watching i'll see y'all in the next one